Hi, City Church family. Nice to have you join us today. My name is Debo. And my name is Derry. You're welcome to our online service today. I believe we've all had a lovely week. And it is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My prayer is that our testimonies will be full and we'll have a great testimony before the end of the service in Jesus' name. Amen. And just before we continue, please join us in prayers. Most gracious Father, we are grateful for today. We thank you for your love and for your mercy. We thank you because this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We ask, O oh Lord, for your presence in every individual home today and we ask that your presence shall bring peace, shall bring joy and shall bring healing for the glory of your name, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that, Debo. And right now, we'll be handing over to the worship team to lead us in worship. But just before that, we would like to invite you to see some of what happens behind the scenes. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to see our bloopers. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Hello, and Hi. about... What was that? Why did you report? Oh, sorry. Good morning, City Church. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, City Church. <laughs> I gave it to the disciples saying... I'm <laughs> sorry, I've got the girls. Well done! <laughs> you just scratched that so loud. <laughs> I made me laugh. Hello Church. Good evening City Church family and welcome to the Isaac House. Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> you can do this Beth, you can do this. I'm not made for TV. Hi! For those who don't know us, we're mum and daughter, so we're able to stand together. What's the matter?
saw Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from back to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ in right Together, sons and daughters, born with blood and walks in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Our God will finish what He started. This is my testimony from them to life. This grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm testifying. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh, 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 oh. If I'm not dead and you're not dead. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead and you're not dead. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead and you're not dead. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead and you're not dead. my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm testifying this is my testimony this is my testimony this is my testimony from death to life this grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm testifying this is my testimony Our testimony is that our grace has rewritten our story and we will testify. Indeed, we will testify. Hallelujah. Amen. That indeed is our testimony. We are rising from death to life. And we are coming out of the lockdown into new life. Amen. Amen. Lovely. And right now, we hand over to Sharam, Sharam and Seba for the Bible reading and for the worship. I'm See you soon. Hi, City Church Sunday. My name is Saba. My name is Shahram. 
and welcome to our home. And do you want to share a verse from Bible with you today? Yes, let's start it. And I want to translate it to Persian for our Iranian member. Okay, ready? Yeah. Send out your light and your true word. Let them be my guide. Let them take me to your holy hill and to your tents. Then I will go up to the altar of God, to the God of my joy. I will be glad and give praise to you Happy. on an instrument of music. God, my God, why are you crushed down my soul and why are you troubled in me? Put your hope in God. I will again give him praise uh, who is my help and my God. نور و راستی خود را بفرست تا هدایتم کنند و مرا به کوه مقدس تو و به مکان سکونتت بازگردانند آنگام به مهراب تو خواهم آرفت ای خدایی که شادی و خوشی من هستی در آنجا با نقمه و سرود تو را ستایش خواهم کرد ای جان من چرا محضون و افسرده شده ای؟ بر خدا امید داشته باش و او را دوباره ستایش کن زیرا او خدا و نجات دهنده توست آمین آمین هللویا هللویا سی یو سون این چرچ سی یو سون این استی سیف پلیز بای With a melody You surround me with a song Of deliverance From my enemies Till all my fears are gone Let's sing that again You unravel me With a melody You surround me With a song Of deliverance From my enemies Till all my fears are gone And I'm no longer
where you are, why don't you just declare that? You're a child of God. You're a child of the King. Today we are His. We be born with a price. We are chosen. We're not forsaken. He is with us. He is for us. this morning I do miss being together uh, in church um, as one body there's something about being together um, like worshipping Jesus together in one place that can't be substituted uh, for a screen um, so know that I miss you all I love you all and I am most definitely looking forward to when we can meet together um, as the church again um, that being said, though, um, let's pray and we'll get into what we're chatting about today. So, Father God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you that we get to gather around our individual screens and we get to listen to your word and be moved by your word. Father God, I just pray that this time would be um, significant. And this time would be just really changing, Lord, for, for, for our lives, God. I just pray that your will will be done and that you would use me as a vessel to communicate your word. In Jesus' name we pray and agree. Amen. Amen. So a quick recap. Um, we've been working our way through the book of Philippians for the past few weeks um, and we've been exploring this whole concept. Well, it's not really it's not really a concept anymore. It's more of a reality. Um, of life in lockdown um, and we've been particularly holding a magnifying glass to the choices um, that Paul made when he was in lockdown. Um, we have been looking at the book of Philippians as I said and, and so Paul had already been in Philippi before. He was writing this letter of encouragement um, but at the same time challenge to the people of Philippi while he himself was bound and restricted. He is in lockdown. And so today we're picking up from Philippians chapter 3 and we're starting from verse 17 and we're going to read up to 21. It says this, he, he writes, join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as I, sorry, just as you uh, have us as a model. Keep your eyes 
on those who live as we do. For as I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Tomorrow marks the 16th week of lockdown starting. And while we're now transitioning out of lockdown, we still have the capacity and the ability to make decisions in lockdown. We can still make decisions now that affect what life looks like for us after lockdown. We can still make decisions in our present that can affect our future. We can still make decisions in our transient environment that will affect our eternal environment. And so I want to suggest to us today that like Paul, we choose to live with an eternal perspective. In those few verses, Paul makes clear, a clear distinction between people who live as enemies of the cross of Christ and those who belong to Jesus's church. He says that they live with their minds on earthly things and, and things that, you know, things that pass away, things that are here today and gone tomorrow. He says that their God is their stomach, meaning that they live worshipping food and, and their appetites and really temporary satisfaction. We know as humans that we'll always need more food. That's the way God made us. He made us with appetites. He made us in such a way that our lives are maintained by a regular intake of energy in the form of food. But Paul used strong language here and said that these people made food a God. They worshipped food. I, I wonder how many times we as people, even now, even today, still give filling our bellies more attention than fixing our eyes on Jesus. Paul says as well that they glory in their shame. The things that they ought to be ashamed of, they revel in it. They're proud of it. Ultimately, Paul says that, and he even writes that it brings him to, to tears and uh, to, to reiterate that he has to reiterate this. He says their destiny, their eternity is destruction. But we as people of God know that our story is different. We get to choose to live with an eternal perspective. And what I, I want to make it clear and plain and to say that we, we get to choose to live with an eternal perspective, meaning it is a choice. We don't automatically do it when we become saved. It actually, it's the unraveling and, and the transforming process that God performs in our lives. He sends us in a different direction. That's what repentance is all about, really. It's, it's turning uh, the direction of our lives. He illuminates our purpose and he guides our focus. And part of that focus, which I put my hands up and say that God has convicted me of this week, um, is that in, in that I've lost focus. But part of choosing, uh, part of our focus is choosing to live knowing that eternity awaits us. And so why? Why do we need to live with an eternal perspective? Well, because our desired destination, that is heaven, eternity, informs our decisions in our journey. I plan to one day buy a house. And so the decisions that I make now uh, can affect how long it takes me until I get to that destination. It affects whether I ever really get to buy a house. And so when I'm, and I'm, I'm not good at this, I am, I'm being honest, I'm, honest moment, I'm not good at this. But when I'm in Zara or when I'm in TK Maxx or wherever I'm shopping on this chosen day, when I'm in MacArthur Glen, for example, um, when I see that dress or I see that top that I just, and it's, it's on sale as well. And I just, I just feel like I need it. 
The decision that I make in that moment informs my destination. It, for, it informs where I get to. The decisions we make now in the everyday matter. That's why we need to leave, live with an inter, eternal perspective. Okay, so how, how do we live with our eternal perspective? What do we do? Well, one thing that it is not, um, one thing we should not do rather, is, is pray to be out of this world. And I'll, although sometimes for me, I feel like um, that would be easier. It would be easier to be like, Jesus, take me now, get me out of here. Um, I look at the brokenness in my own life. I look at the brokenness in the world. I look at the pain and the suffering that the people have to go through, that I have sometimes had to go through. And I think to myself, Lord, get me out of here. But that would be too easy. Paul, Paul understood this as well. He talked about it earlier in the letter. Um, he said that to live is Christ and to die is gain. He knew it too. He knew that heaven was way, way, way better than where we are right now. But he also knew that he had purpose. He also knew that God needed him in his, his moment of life, in, in, in where he was living, to serve him on earth. And he needs us too. So how do we live with this eternal perspective? Number one, know that we are just passing through. If I know that heaven is my home, then earth is just my assignment. This is temporary. This is why I think Paul was able to endure the suffering that he did. You know, he he was arrested. He was beaten. He was he was bruised. Similar to Jesus. You know, Jesus went through suffering. Um, and it's because he knew that in the in the in the um, he that this, these moments of suffering um, was just a grain of sand in comparison to the Swansea Bay of a beach that is heaven. And so to those of you who are currently suffering, take comfort in knowing that today is just today. Heaven is our home. Verse 21 says that Jesus will transform our lowly bodies so that we will be like his glorious body. Heaven is our home. And so we are just passing through. I also have to mention, I suppose, the other side of that coin in that we can go about, um, you know, living that YOLO life. For those of you who don't know YOLO, it's, uh, it stands for you only live once. And so we, some people, you know, they, they go about living their lives, wanting to live carefree and then carelessly. Um, take our bodies again as an example. Some people have the mindset uh, that they can do what they want with their bodies now because in eternity we'll have new bodies anyway, right? Well, that might be the case, but we also will be faced when we get to eternity with our maker and he will judge us from what Paul calls uh, the judgment seat. And so we need to weigh things. We need to make sure that, you know, we, we live with this eternal uh, perspective, knowing that we're going to be faced with our maker. How do we live uh, with an eternal perspective? Number two, send out invitations to the party. Uh, if I know uh, heaven is my home, then I'd want people I love to be there too. Living with a heavenly perspective means doing the best I can to partner with the Holy Spirit in sharing the gospel message with the people I love uh, that don't get it yet. Many of you know that I live with Kelly. So this is Kelly's house that I'm in right now. Uh, and one of the things I love the most about Kelly is how eager she is uh, to see those closest to her come to know Jesus. It spurs me on. And, and after almost three years of living with her, I get to celebrate with her. I get to share in, in, in her wins of when, you know, she has really cool conversations with people about God. Um, but it's also inspired me to, to look at my circles uh, that I'm in. And, and it's compelled me to point the people in my life to the only person that can save their life. Send out invitations to the party. Number three, how do we live with an eternal perspective? Carry yourself as a citizen. Remember verse 20 said, but our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I was looking at a few commentaries on this verse and, and this is what one had to say about it. What the apostle means is that Christians are citizens of the heavenly city, enrolled on its register, free of its privileges, and on the other hand, obliged by the nobility of such a position to live. Whether uh, in the city or not as yet, as those who belong to it and represent it. As well as being a citizen of the UK, I'm also a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. This means that I'm enrolled on its register, I'm free of its privileges, I'm obliged by its nobilities, but I live here in Wales. Whether or not I live here or there, I most definitely belong to that nation and represent it. As a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, I carry that with me wherever I go. I carry it with pride, I promote its beauties, and I tell of its wonders and rich culture. I am proudly from Trinidad and Tobago. As citizens of heaven, though we're not there yet, we carry that to the school run with us. We promote its beauty at uni. We tell of its wonders and a rich culture in Lidl or in Tesco, or if you're really fancy in, in Marks and Sparks. But we have an eternal perspective by carrying ourselves as citizens of heaven. Number four, how do we live with an eternal perspective? Do some research. Some of the Old Testament prophets um, give it insights uh, and the book of Revelation is sprinkled with, with heavenly insights. One thing I've learned from studying, um, very briefly, but studying, um, you know, what heaven will be like is that I know that I'm going to be spending a lot of time worshipping my King Jesus in heaven. And so I'm getting ready now. I'm, I'm honing my skills. I'm learning to worship God. I'm enjoying worshiping God in the here and now. Why? Because I know that in eternity, I will be doing it a lot. Practice. This is practice for eternity. What can I do now in, in doing my research? What can I know now and do now to prepare myself for eternity? How do we live with an eternal perspective? Carry, uh, ourselves as citizens, but also do some research. And finally, how do we live with an eternal perspective like Paul? Make sure you're on the boss's good side. In Matthew 7, when Jesus is teaching, he says that there will be people to whom he says, I never knew you, away from me, evil, evildoers. Again, in, in verse 20 of chapter three of Philippians, Paul says, we eagerly await the return of the saviour. But we, we don't know exactly when that will be. The gospels tell us that only God the Father knows what time that will be. Um, but we know that today we are closer than we have ever been to the return of Jesus. That should excite us, of course but it also should provoke in us a sense of urgency to be ready. Can you say for sure right now that you are a Christian? Have you repented? Have you received the forgiveness of the Father? Have you forgiven others? Are there people that you need to forgive? Have you submitting, uh, submitted your weaknesses to his holiness, to his perfection? And please, please, please don't hear me wrong in this. I don't want to scare in anyone into becoming a Christian. The love of God is life giving. It's powerful. It's glorious. It's beautiful and it's penetrating. And if you know in your heart that you aren't right with God, but you want to be, if you maybe you've, you've, uh, you've got this weird feeling, this pull, that's the Holy Spirit calling you to Jesus. And there is a beautiful, beautiful journey of discovery for you on the other side of this moment. And so if that is you, if you feel this pull, if you feel like, oh, I, what's happening? Like, I feel like I, I do, I do want to become a Christian. Then I've got a prayer for you that I would want to pray over you, but also invite you to pray um, as well. Um, it's, a, it's a salvation prayer. It's, it's, it's a way of saying, as marking this moment, really, 
um, as saying, look, God, today's the day. I want to I want to be someone who represents you. I want to be someone who represents heaven. So if that is you, then please, if you if you would like to um, pray this prayer, um, you're at home. So you can say it out loud or you can say it in your heart if you want to. But please, um, please do pray this prayer. God, thank you for loving me in the best way possible. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to be born and to die on the cross so that I could have relationship with you. Jesus, thank you for bridging that gap. I'm sorry for all the wrong things I've done and said and thought. Today and for the rest of my life, I turn to you. I want you to help me and I want you to live in me. Today, I accept the salvation that you offer. I believe that the blood that dripped from Jesus as he died for me is strong enough to make me clean and whole and to save me. Come into my life, live in my heart and change me forever. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And, you know, if that was you, I just want to encourage you, if you just prayed that prayer, please tell someone about it. Maybe you've got another person in your life who's a Christian. This is a monumental moment in your life, the trajectory of your life. The purpose that you get to find now um, is incredible. So please, please, please tell someone um, that uh, if that was you. But also tell us, we want to know if you've not um, connected with us as a church yet we would love to connect with you we would love to know um that you know that you made the decision to become a christian that you made a decision to give your life over to jesus it is a great day to become a christian i'm just going to end uh, with a prayer and i really hope that you've all felt challenged um and inspired uh, in this um to live with an eternal perspective like paul did Let's pray again. Father God, we just thank you for this moment. We thank you for your word that has been shared to us all today. We thank you for um, the message of the cross and just even today, how powerful a message that is. God, I pray that you would you would help us to live with this eternal perspective like like Paul did. God, I pray that, you know, we would be people who, who have, have the, the boldness to send out the invitations, Lord, to the pie. God, I pray that we, we would be people who, um, who carry ourselves in a way that, um, you know, we are citizens of heaven, that we would, we would share of its beauties and we would, we would conduct ourselves in such a way. God, I pray that you would help us to be people um, who are eager and who are um, excited and inquisitive about what heaven will be like. God, I pray that you would um, inspire us and, and, and prepare us in, in these moments, in the, in the life that we've got now. Prepare us for heaven, Lord. Inspire us to research. God, we want your glory now more than ever. So have your way. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
My name is Lloyd. Hi, my name is Uche. Uh, we're here today to uh, take communion together. Um, before we start, I just want to have a quick uh, discussion or chat about why we take communion. Um, so the reason why we take communion is to remember the finished work of the cross and that uh, Jesus came to earth uh, to die, die on the cross to wash away our sins. Um, I think the hymn, uh, It Is Well With My Soul, uh, sums up best when it says, uh, one of the verses says, My sin, or the bliss, or the glorious thought, my sin not in part but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. Amen. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink this, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let each man examine himself and also let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. I'm just going to take a, a couple of minutes now just to uh, have a chance to us to breathe and just to examine ourselves um, as, the, as the passage said. Okay, let's pray. Uh, for the bread. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come for you, we thank you, Lord, for communion. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for the symbols. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for your body which is broken on the tree for us lord we thank you lord for uh, uh what it symbolizes the lord and we thank you lord that all our sins are washed away by your your redeeming love and your perfect salvation we pray lord that uh, you just help us to remember the, uh, this now and not to take it for granted we ask all these things your precious blood amen okay. And uh, now we're just going to pray for uh, the wine as well. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come for you, we just thank you, Lord, for your precious blood that washes away every one of our sins. We thank you, Lord, that um, every sin that we've ever committed, our thought and deed and of action is, is washed away uh, by your amazing blood. And we just thank you, Lord, for, for the finished work of the cross, oh Lord. Lord, help us not to take it for granted, but just to live our lives out uh, in the light of the mercy and the power of the cross, oh Lord. We ask all these things for your precious blood. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Bye. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you are doing well. It's been a great morning. And I'd like to thank everyone who has led us and ministered to us today. I just want to take a, a few minutes to share a couple of things with you and also to take a, a, a little bit of time to pray with you and to pray for you. Just a little bit of family news. As a church family, we share our joys and we share our sorrows. We want to congratulate Richard and Pauline Griffiths, who are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. God bless you guys. What a great achievement. We commiserate with Lee and Michelle Bennett, 
on the loss of Lee's dad. And we are going to pray for them and their family in a few moments time. As you were aware, in a few weeks, uh, Dustin's time as youth pastor will be coming to an end. As a church, we not only want to express our thanks and appreciation for the years of service that he has given, we also want to ensure that Dustin and the family are taken care of financially at this difficult time, which is why we want to present a gift to the family that is equivalent to two months take home salary. If you would like to contribute towards this gift, you will find details on how to do that in the weekly mail out and also on our social media pages. If you have any questions on this matter, please feel free to get in touch with me. Well, I would like to take a couple of minutes now to pray. And so let's just talk with the Lord and pray together. Father, we want to thank you for all your love and for all your goodness. We want to thank you for being the great God that you really are. We want to thank you for the time we have shared together today in worship around the word and remembering the sacrifice of your son, our saviour, Jesus, as we have taken of bread and wine together. Father, we can celebrate today with Richard and Pauline, and we pray that they will continue to know the richness of your blessing upon their lives. Thank you for your faithfulness to them over these past 60 years. We know that you will continue to be faithful to them in the days that are to come. Father, we remember Lee and Michelle and their family. You are the God of all comfort. And we pray that they today will know the comfort that only you can bring. And similarly, Father, for those who in recent weeks have lost loved ones, would you embrace them, envelop them in your love and continue to bring the comfort that only you can bring. Father, we remember those in our fellowship who are sick and going through treatment uh, in the hospital and at home. And we pray that you will be very near to them. We remember today Pastor Ken. We think of Dr. John. We remember Ernie Pierce. And folks, if you were thinking of someone right now, just mention their name and lift them up to the Lord. And Father, we pray together that you will step into these situations and that you will do something in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for all who need your healing touch, that they will know your healing touch. And friend, if you're watching right now and you need his healing touch, right now I want to encourage you, reach out to him. Ask the Lord to touch you as we agree with you right now and stand with you for his touch. Saviour, saviour, hear our humble cry. While on others you are calling, do not pass me by. Father, for everyone who is reaching out now, I pray that you will not pass them by and that they will know your touch. And today, in the name of Jesus, we speak health, we speak healing, we speak wholeness, we agree together. I want to pray for a moment for provision. And there are many in our church family who need to know his provision. We celebrate the fact that you are the God who provides. And we pray today, Father, for the provision of employment. We pray for the provision of increased finance. We pray for our asylum seekers and refugees that you will provide for them in incredible ways in the name of Jesus. And before I go, friends, I want to pray for his blessing. Father, I thank you that you're the God who loves to bless us. And we look at our lives and we see that we are so blessed. And I pray now that the blessing that makes us rich and adds no sorrow may be multiplied upon our lives in Jesus' name. And so today, friends, I pray that the Lord will bless you. I pray that he will keep you that he will make his face shine upon you, that he will be gracious to you, 
that the Lord will turn his face towards you and that he will give you peace. Peace. Perfect peace. The peace that he promised. The peace that passes all understanding. I speak that peace now into your heart and into your mind and into your spirit. I speak that peace into every troubling situation and circumstance and storm. I speak that peace into your home. I speak that peace over City Church Swansea. I speak it over our city in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you folks. Have a great Sunday and have a a great week. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye. Thank you, Lloyd and Uche, for leading us in communion. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, for joining us in today's service. Yeah, thank you for joining us. I believe we've all been blessed. And um, we are looking forward to that beautiful testimony God has in store for us. Amen. And please don't forget, we have a series of activities lined up for us um, during the week. Feel free to check our Facebook page and um, the church website for details of the activities. But later on today, Uh, we'll be having Seniors Connect, singing the hymns. Join us for that. It's always beautiful with the Lewis's leading us. Yeah, and that's at half six. Immediately after this one, by 12 o'clock, there's something for the kids. And like we said earlier, please do feel free to join us for every other activity during the week. Thank you. Thank you. And from us now, it's bye-bye. God bless you.